This is awesome. I'm delighted to be closing this again. And I've, I've just had a ball three days. I've, 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 I think I've got a couple of signed up a couple of new clients. I think I've met a couple of existing happy clients and just lots of people I've known for a long period of time. So it's fantastic. And I'd like to buy every share in the session I've just been sitting here buying, but I just don't have quite enough money yet to do that. Um, when we work with our clients on our hedging side and risk management side of the business, the main slide, or the, if, if they got this slide, the title always says, the questions remain the same, it's the answers that keep on changing. Um, I like to say to people, particularly when people are looking at gold price, the most dangerous person in the room, in any room, is the person who believes with absolute certainty they know what, is, what the future holds. 100%. Have you noticed that? The kids all say that now. It's just this new expression that comes in. We've got to agree with everything. You say something, someone goes, 100%. And nothing is 100%, and particularly when you're looking forward to commodities, not 100%. But in the long run, we can probably be very faithful that politicians won't change. They'll keep printing money, and the value of hard assets will go up. But how the, how the path it gets there, I don't know. But you've got to ask a whole lot of questions. So I asked the question, last year I gave the president stacks on the mill and I gave her what I thought was a very bullish reason for why I thought the gold price would start to go up. Well, we went to Fremantle a couple of months ago and the gold price was exactly the same as it was when I'd given the presentation here nine months before. So when they asked me what was my title of the presentation about two months ago, I said, well, why are we waiting? Because we were still waiting for it to happen. We didn't have to wait much longer because you all know what happened in the last couple of months, and particularly in terms of $8 gold, just extraordinary the way the gold price jumped up. So you might ask, rather than why are we waiting, as I said there, what are, what are they waiting for? Because we all believe we're in the room, we're all heavily invested, waiting for other people to come in and start to pay the kind of money that we think these shares are worth. That's our lament. How much longer might we need to wait? That's another question we should be asking. Is it worth waiting for? Absolutely. What might we need for people outside the room to finally get it and start to see new people coming to this conference that really have got into what we've all been believing for quite some time? And the other question you've got to ask is what might delay or disrupt it? Because it, whatever the long-term path is, even if someone told you what the gold price is going to be um, in five years' time, with absolute certainty, could tell you, you could still get it horribly wrong if you geared yourself into it did the wrong way because you, if you can't stand the journey risk. So all of those things you've got to... But the most important thing is I don't have all the answers. I just keep asking questions, and then you see what answers the market gives you. I put this chart up last year. I had though all those same arrows on there. Now, I, I just want to explain to you, this chart is the chart of the gold market since 1970. You'll see on occasion the line is red. We have a scoring system at Noah's Rule that we use to score all the markets that we look at, and it's basically a score of trend. And so when the, the dollar index, or the US dollar, has a positive trend, and the, the Dow gold ratio, which is a relationship, or, the, or basically the relative strength of gold versus equities, if that also has a positive trend, that means general equities are making you more money owning them than gold. If both of those things are happening, the line gets painted red. Now, I think you can all see here that for most of the history, and certainly in the 80s and the, and the 90s, as we discussed last year, you'd have a lot more hair and it wouldn't be so grey if you're a gold investor if you just stayed out of the market when the line was red. Now, we didn't back test this or anything. We just asked the simple question of our, of our chart guru and a guy who does all this back in the office. Will, just, just paint that line red, Will, whenever the score for the US dollar is positive and, the, and, and stocks are outperforming gold. Now, when that big blue section, uh, the, big, the big rally here, this fantastic rally, happened, you can see there was one tiny little bit of red, but otherwise it was always, always there. Now, for most of this time, the, the, the US dollar was actually in ascendancy. Gold can outperform a rising dollar as long as it's outperforming equities, right? So, but the, the thing here is I pointed to the, when you have a significant high and then you break it, the kind of moves you can have, and then how these highs dominate. And when we then broke that high, what happened? And then we made another significant high. I, I'm talking a significant high is one that sort of is a new all-time high that holds for one or two years. And then we had that one. Now, when we were here last year, I said, right, we're getting ready to break. Well, we have now broken. So... You know, obviously the, the, the paper ends there, the gold market does not end there. Um, this is log scale, so if you look at the kind of move we've had, this percentage move overall is still quite relatively small relative to what we had back there. And if people go, well, that's not really relevant because that's a long time ago, other people put up charts of how many more dollars there are in the world today than ounces of gold. You know, if you could actually see a pile of all the money that is out there in the world, you, you'd be holding on to your gold quite tightly before you'd hand it over, even at today's price. So, so that's the kind of setup. It looks pretty good. The other thing I would point out that this is the, I'm not trying to turn you into a ch chart. I'm not talking about trying to be too technical, but this is the, the very long-term 200-week moving average. And one thing I would say is between the last 
last time that we were here meeting together, the gold market actually did fall down and touch that average. So I, I believe that when it gets that average, it kind of refreshes it, right? So gold's not extended because it's actually been at its four year average within the last 12 months. So people say it's expensive, I just don't, expensive compared to what is the question that you would have to ask. So certainly from that perspective, you know, gold looks very good. The story looks very good. Interestingly, the line just turned blue. One of the things, you would have seen a lot of commentary in the last couple of weeks, actually. People who've been very bullish gold and very right for a long time, being very negative about the recent gold price rally because it doesn't match their frame. And to some extent, they were dis describing a version of that, that we actually had a red line. The line was red, but the gold price was going up. You can see, if you look at here, how rare that has been when the market's in an uptrend. It can be red and rising when it's in a bear market, but it's been very unusual. And this last period, has been there. So there's been lots of kind of gold has been going up despite the fact that the kind of things that people historically looked at was happening. And so I believe that's quite positive that we actually managed to rally in the face of dual headwinds that normally do this. And now those dual headwinds are gone. So that's, that's really pretty exciting. Now, I believe, and Pierre Lassonde talks about this, so if you don't believe me, you can believe him because he's a lot smarter and a hell of a lot richer than I am. Um, he wasn't the person that introduced me to the Dow Gold Ratio, a man called Richard Russell did that. But basically what we're looking at here is how many ounces of gold it would take to buy um, the Dow Jones at various times in the past. And I like to anchor around here is the year I finished high school, it was one to one. That's not very long ago in my memory. One to one, 800 Dow, 800 gold. Pierre Lassonde about here used to say it's going back to one to one. And I'm quite happy, as I said last year, as long as I don't step out in front of a bus, I will see it somewhere between one to one and two to one in my lifetime. Um, and I'm doing everything I can to stay alive as long as possible to make that true. But look, that's, that, that's gold very negative when stocks are clearly outperforming. No need to own gold, go long equities. But you can see these red periods, these downtrends, this is when gold is outperforming. And notice how these red arrows appear here and these very significant levels. In the limited time I have left today, 16. If you draw that line 16 all the way back over here somewhere on that chart to 1929, 16 in 1929 was where the Dow Gold, was, uh, the Dow Gold ratio was just before the crash in 29. So 16, when we broke that number, it went very dramatically. Now before you get too excited about if we break that number, gold's going to go crazy, that move represents the Dow halving from 14,000 to 7,000. It's hard to, it even hard to imagine it was only 14,000 back there. So that was the Dow halving. But hey, if you're owning gold, you could now buy twice as many shares for your ounce. So it was still better to be long gold, but then gold took off. And we got down to about here five to one. Now all the people, as we discussed last year, you know, when they cried foul and they said, oh, gold was a conspiracy when gold got sold off, it was just general equity investors being happy to go back in the water. Well, we've been going sideways. Everyone talks about how the ETF volumes are falling. So the ETF volumes have been falling despite the fact that most Western investors would have been just as well off to be in gold as equities over this period of time. But look at that 16. Every Friday night, get the Dow, divide it by the gold price when you wake up on Saturday morning and remind yourself of what that number is. That's as simple as that ratio gets, 16. If we come under 16, I believe that general equity investors, looking back at history, looking back here, is going to start to say, I don't know why gold's going up. And all the gold experts tell me it shouldn't be going up, but it's going up and I need to own some. Because in history, if that ratio is below that number, something tells me that I should be worried about the world. And the one truth about gold is gold is the closest thing in financial markets that we have to the truth. I, I absolutely believe that. Other people will say it's nobody li else's liability. I believe it's stronger than that. It's been around for 5,000 years. They keep printing money. We very, you can see how hard it is to find gold and actually produce it economically. It's the source of truth. Measure every market against gold. I do it for the Dow. You can do it for oil. At the moment, oil's ridiculously cheap relative to gold. Um, so you know, all commodities look good. And I know I'm going into negative times and I don't eat chocolate. Well, Chrissy's left, so that's good. We'll just go. I actually, does anyone understand the whole system, how Chrissy moving closer to you is supposed to make you finish? I, 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 that doesn't work for me. But anyway, um, the, so very quickly, very quickly, given that no one's trying to drag me off the stage, the GSCI versus the S&P 500, I've just switched from the Dow to the S&P, but it's the same thing. This is the Goldman Sachs Commodity Index. I put this up last year. 
This is commodities being undervalued, hard assets being undervalued relative to general equities. That just generally means that people buying most um, AI stocks and other things are probably overpaying relative to real things. Remember how bad it was in the 90s. Even if commodities double in value relative to general equities in the next couple of years, we're still going to be cheaper than we were when they were stupidly cheap in the late 90s. This is a slingshot. This is a big thing waiting to come back. But it's building here. The trend has overall been positive, but it looks to me very similar to it did here around 2000, around the time the last big equity market fell off. And I certainly think there's lots of smart money coming off the top and coming in to general equities. And just for the non-gold people in the room, and that's where a lot of the excitement is going to be in the future, this is now gold relative to all those other commodities. So gold is actually really very expensive relative to other commodities or other commodities are just ridiculously cheap compared to real money. All right, so, so gold in your portfolio, absolutely, but God, it's a good time to be starting to collect a lot of the other things in the basket, which is energy and food and all those other things. So gold is actually as, as overvalued relative to commodities as we, it was in, at those highs in 1980. So that cycle is a little bit out of sync, but overall, this just says to me, if you've got to make a choice of where you put your money, well, firstly, you take your cash, you buy gold. But then when you've got to get rid of your gold, where might you go? Well, a bit of a base metals exposure has got to be good as well. So the picture, you know, it's a bit like watching paint dry, this, isn't it? It's been a couple, of, I've been saying the same thing for two or three years. The questions remain the same, but the answers are starting to come our way. Thank you very much.